Good morning, good morning. How is everyone today? Glad that you're glad that you're here with us this morning. Good Saturday. We're um, bracing here for our next round of storms. So, and I've had a little bit of an unusual week. I because of snow and storms that we had last week, I didn't have my grandkids too much uh, because they couldn't go to school and and um, their dad, who's a principal, is off school too. So they stayed home and kept dry mostly because they did have to build snowmen and play in the snow. So that was good. And uh, so that was more or less a, a different kind of week for me. I got some things done that uh, I normally probably wouldn't have, which was good. And, you know, had a honeydew list that my husband was thrilled about. So, you know, the week was good. The first thing I want to talk about this morning is I had some questions about the tape that I used last week when we did the Kawandi quilt. And I wanted to share just that information again with you. So I'm going to pop down here and it was this is what it was this is masking tape with this design on it and right now at hardware stores um, even michael's i believe carries it uh, walmart uh, target might even i i you know i don't remember where i got this but it's scotch brand and it's masking tape and it has the um you know the the tape measure on it this is washi tape and I bought this um, where they have scrapbooking supplies it I think I got it at Joann's and so it too has you know the the ruler on it it's just narrower and this is what I use if I want to keep my stitches even I just um, move it along with me uh, with the with the washi tape or the masking tape so that's what it was and um, this one's a scotch brand and this one doesn't have a brand name on it, but it was, but I got it in the um, scrapbooking section. So get that out of the way here for a minute, um, just to catch you up on that. And had lots of good, great questions from last week. That was wonderful. And again, always, you know, ask your questions and I will get to them as we move through. Today we're going to be doing the cathedral window. And it's intimidating block uh, to many of us and always has been until you try it. And then you'll find out that it is truly not too much more, you know, intimidating than any other block. And I've got three ways to show you how to do it. And because we know we all sew differently and we see things from a different perspective and some things are easier for some of us than it is for others. And so I'm going to start with the traditional way to put a cathedral window together that I learned many, many years ago. And then I got two other ones that have been designed and I'm not sure who the original designers were of them. It's just things that I've learned along the way and have forgotten who I learned them from completely. So the other, you know, and they, I'm going to go from what I would consider the most difficult to the, the simplest. And it all depends on how your brain works and how you put it all together to make it, um, to make it work for you. So let's get started because it's going to take a minute for this all to be done. Let me drop down to the table and I'll keep your and hello everyone. Thanks for popping in and saying hi. I do appreciate that and the questions that come with that. So to make a cathedral window, I'm going to go through this step by step so that as we move through, we're not jumping ahead to get to the end. You saw a picture of it on the Quilt Show newsletter, you know, what a cathedral window looks like. And as we move through this, you're going to see step by step exactly what I do. And so the very first thing that I, that I did and the measurements that I am using 
make it so that I can use charm packs and mini charm packs. And just for the record today, the, the store has some beautiful charm packs and uh, I, I'm not quite sure about the mini charms, but John is with us today on live stream and so he might pop something in there if they have the mini charm packs in the store but they have some awfully pretty uh, charm packs if you're in need of some of those so i started by and i use freezer paper i i use freezer paper a lot because i can iron it down the fabric stays um in place i don't have to worry about it moving on me with it with a template and other things so i use freezer paper and i i used a double layer and so i cut it into a nine inch square so you know shiny side down for the first layer shiny side down the second layer iron them together and then i cut out the nine inch square then i um cut out 10 inch squares of background material Traditionally, it was usually um, muslin, and muslin is very often used, and you'll see it especially in the uh, vintage quilts and things that are out there. And but I use different things um, now. I kind of um, jazz it up a little bit for my own depending on what I'm using it for I haven't made anything cathedral window in a while except for a few pillows in the last few years but and today you're going to see how you might make a, a you know a pillow or something like that um, anyway then so then I cut my 10 inch um, squares of background material and this one I just pulled because it was a layer cake that I that I had on my table and that works that would work really well too just a, a neutral background of a um, layer cake so I think it would be very helpful and in fact I know it is very helpful if you use some um, starch some you know spray the acorn uh, and right now it's just gone straight out of my head, the uh, the spray that we use when we iron our, our pieces and stuff. But that just gives it a little bit more body. And, um, and I know that they have the best press in the store. So then once I have that completed, then I start um, pressing all of my pieces. So I this just goes down. And what I'm going to do then is turn, you know, place it on the center, and I'm going to press all the way around so that I have this turned under onto the top of this. Then I'll remove the freezer paper. And what I have left, let me move that out of the way. And what I have left is a piece that has all of the edges turned up. One of the things that I found was helpful for me is I dropped a, a dot of glue in the corners and re-ironed it. And now comes the folding part. And this was already a piece that I had folded and ironed so that it would, it would go a little bit quicker this morning. So you start at the corners and you fold those corners up to the center. I made a press mark. I folded it twice and found the center and pressed that center there with the iron so that I would know where the center was. Then I fold it up on this corner, folded it up here, folded it again, and folded it again. All right. Then you're going once you have that done, you're going to do it again. You're going to do it a second a second time of folding up the corners and you'll have a little, you know, a little pocket like this. All right? And I am if you're making a pillow, if you you make 9 of these, um, three three across, three down, you will have enough to, to create 
a pillow. I'm just going to make, I wanted a pot holder, um, a, a trivet for the table kind of thing. So I'm only going to do four. So you make, you know, your, your four of those um, or nine, or if you're making a whole quilt, however many that you need. And these come out to be about four and a half inches. So if you, if you want to know, um, you know, size dimension with that, then now it's time to sew these together. So we have made our template nine inches, put it on a 10 inch square, folded up the corners, put a dot of glue on each corner, uh, found the center of our square, folded it up from all four corners, and then did it a second time. And now we're going to put it together. Um, when you're pressing, I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to work at getting these points, you know, and that they all come to the center um, evenly. Just take a little bit of extra time and do that because you'll appreciate the end result later on. So to sew these together, I'm going to lift this side up and I'm going to lift these up. Press, um, not press, I'm going to pin because we're going to sew on that crease along there. So I want to make sure that this is right on and again, that makes a difference when you're getting to the point of pressing and sewing what actually makes the cathedral window. So I'm going to drop a couple of pins. I, I put them over here. Others will put them on this, in the center. Um, do what works for you. Um, but what I really am paying close attention to is I want, you know, the point of the fold on this side and the point of the fold on this side very much together. So uh, taking a little bit of time to do that. So let's sew that. And again, you're, you're sewing right down uh, that... that pin out of the way, that crease, and you know, just making sure that that doesn't overlap there. Um, when I put my pin in, um, and I'm going to remove it because it was creating a little bit of a mountain for me. All right. So now you have those two sewn together and so I press them, you know, in place just so that seam is nice and flat. And I'm going to pay attention to my corners that I am pressing excuse me for not moving my camera, uh, for not moving, um, you know, I want my corners nice and sharp. So I'm, you know, going to go back and make sure that everything is laying, you know, as it should right there at those points, press them in. And now I have these two pieces sewn together. All right. Then, and I already have the other two here sewn together. So now I want to make a four patch and you would do the same thing that I'm doing right now with, you know, nine or however many you're going to, you're going to be making. So I want to sew these two together. So again, I am going to pin And I, you know, really want to make sure everything is, is lined up. And so I'm going to start with my edges. Make sure that they are pinned carefully. And 
and the other intersection, that center intersection, is another place where I want to make sure all of it comes together. And I'm going to drop my pin a little bit further down so that that stays put. And now I'm going to sew across there. All right. As I sew, I, I just want to make sure that everything stays flat, all of my points are coming together. It's really no different than anything that I sew because we all want our points and everything to match up as it's supposed to. And if you just take a, an extra second or two with your pressing, um, you're going to get that um, to all come and, and flow together very nicely. So now I have this row, so I'm going to drop my iron right there in the middle so everything is pressed back down. I want to make sure again um, at this point that it's all coming together as it should and I don't want to iron on my mat, that wouldn't be very smart. And I'm just, you know, pressing that down on those edges so that all right. So now we have a piece that looks like this. All right. Now I you know our vintage ones usually just leave the muslin and we work, um, and, and when these get folded back, you're gonna see more muslin in here. And sometimes I, I like that, that's what I'm looking for and would appreciate that, but sometimes I like to jazz it up a little bit. And a couple of things happen right now. At this point, you would sew these together. All right, so that they are attached. You can do that either by hand or you can do that by machine. And if you're gonna do it by machine, use a very, very narrow uh, zigzag so that you there's no chance of you missing that center and that it's all in there. And just, you know, a half an inch to an inch, uh, both vertical and horizontal across that your you know and you'll it'll be seen on the back but um, not a big deal or take a needle and thread and close those in but what I plan on doing excuse me I had to grab something for a second all right is I'd like that to look a little bit differently but before we I, I share that with you you're not going to put your other fabric where where these are open you're going to place them here and this is where the mini charms comes in really great because you don't have to do all that cutting and you would put you know your mini charms and I'm just going to pull some out here in the pink family and you know with four of them I 
we'll get we'll get some green going on here too. So some green and pink. And you know, put them in there however you know you wish to um, to put them. All right. So then you're going to have your four um, centers there. And then uh, here, when you put these down, it's really helpful if you glue them in some way. You can use, a, you know, a dot of the acorn glue to hold it in place, um, you know, a, a glue pen, um, even a, a glue stick. And it's very um, helpful uh, to do that. And I can't even get the top off my glue stick. So when these go back and you're you're turning them so that they they make you know the turn you're gonna see white over here well I decided that I want to see something different so I am going to put um, a square under here I think when I do this And now is when I would sew this. I would put all of these in here, and I cut it about four and a quarter, because uh, these are four and a half, but um, I needed a little, a little bit of space so that those fit inside there. So this is just my take on it. These do not have to be put in here at all. And I would tape that down. Then this is where I'd go to my machine, and I would you know, sew these down, or I would either do it by hand if I was going to do that. And then glue stick, just a little bit of glue, just to hold it in place and line it up, you know, on your seam line so that they, they stay put. And, you know, center those in there and eyeball them. All right, so I'm all I'm basically all set up to sew. So I want to check your your questions and and comments here before I get too much further. Let's see if we have any. Okay, so all of the squares need to be stitched together first. If I wanted to make a 10 by 10 table topper, then I would construct the 100 squares into the base as the first step. Yes, you would. And then if you're not going to add anything, any of the fabrics inside, then you're, you're just going to start placing these fabrics down once you have um, these all sewed in place. So I'll go through those steps one more time. Um, uh, the four meeting points sewn down. Yes, I can. I can do that. I'm gonna take and uh, so I simply put a knot. I'm gonna bring, put the knot at the back of my of my piece so that it's not showing on the top. And by hand, it goes pretty quick. I simply go across, you know, pull that in, um, grab it from, um, you know, the other side. All right. And I'm going to add another stitch just to make sure it's nice and firmly held in there. I'm 
knot it off. And I'll pull that knot to the to the back or into the center of that so you know there isn't anything excess there. So I, I basically just put that in and this is the one that I will um, sew for you to show you the next part because all right so we're ready you know to to work at this now as we're gonna start to sew these basically we'll be pulling you know these back um, so that they make that and here where it's already sewn it's probably easier for you to see um, these simply just pull back into that curve and that's the curve that we're going to sew down uh, if I'm doing them one at a time I will sew this one and then I'll move across and sew that but the other thing that's really kind of nice so I don't have to stop and start over and over again is that if I start here I can sew here and then just continue on this side and so to the end and when I come to you know the other one you know across from that I can sew this one back you know this way this one would come this way and then this one would be you know this way and I can and I can keep sewing and then I don't have to stop and start or you can do them one at one square at a time so these are all in place I have sewn you know this square in so I want to take this to um, I'm confused by that you know the colored fabric you have put underneath this colored fabric that I put underneath is is simply my design choice that is not part of necessarily the cathedral window in the traditional sense they leave it open and your muslin would be showing on the bottom side this would all open um, into a muslin piece so that is simply my design choice and yes I glued it down just so it would be held in place um, for that so um, I, I just touched it with the um, glue stick and so that is a design choice what is the pad under my sewing needle oh that's the so steady mat and um, hopefully John will put a put a link up to share um, where you can find that at the store so every place four squares meet need to be sewn down yes that is correct here and here here those all need to be sewn in place so you're sewing here 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 and here with four patches and with nine you would have another set over here um, Tula Pink or Cave would make a beautiful um, all right and so it's just for me it was just a design choice that I made so I'm going to take this over to the machine and show you how I um, sew one of these together now you can pin it um, you know like here in the center so that it, it doesn't move on you um, let me do that it's kind of for me it's it's a little more awkward to pin it um, but you can and I will so that you know that that's a possibility in there so I'm going to sew that curve and um, I could sew from you know the top here and then you know go this way and I, I would only have to sew uh, I wouldn't have to pick up my you know start and stop is basically what I'm trying to say all right I am going to be following with my presser foot the edge of it right here I 
I'm going to follow the edge of this around with the edge of my regular 97 foot. I find it basically you want to sew as close as you can to that edge and however you can best do that. So I have folded it over. I've kept my, you know, sewn point right there. Um, and now I'm ready to start sewing that. And I got one stitch in and now I adjust, I take it slow. I, I really work at keeping my presser foot on that edge. And with the pin in there, you know, it, it works great. You don't have to pay much attention to it. This is where my orange stick, uh, which you can get in, you know, where you buy nail polish and, and all that kind of stuff. The, because the, the wood kind of attaches to the fabric a little bit. And I find my orange stick works really well on something like this where I, I really need to keep the fabric in place. And I can keep that all the way to the end. And I'm going extra slow so you can, you can see. And after a couple of times through, um, it gets, you know, all right. So I've got that one sewn. Let me bring it back over here so you can see. So I've sewn that down very close to um, this folded over. It's right along that edge and into here. So when I do the next one, um, I'm gonna pop up here so you can see that again as it overlaps just at the end and then I can make that, that you know, line to sew and the stitching will come right along there and it'll meet right in the corner. And so it's no more, let me sew this one. So my presser foot's down. I take that first um, stitch in there so that I can pull this back, um, you know, in a, in a sharp, you know, one holds it here um, pretty well too, um, but I kind of like the stick. Um, but I do recommend some kind of stiletto um, as you move around. I want that to come right over the other piece. All right, so you now have this one sewn. These two come to a nice point. This one comes around and you would keep, you know, sewing those. Again, generally speaking, I didn't sew all these together right away for you. So you can have, you know, that another fabric peeking out underneath. It could be a solid, it can be a print. You can make these solid, that a print. Um, K for Tula Pink would be absolutely wonderful in there. Or you can leave it just the muslin and when you sew this back, what you see is the white fabric underneath, and that draws your attention more to this. And this is where I, another design element might be, is some of those shot cottons or a linen underneath with, you know, a complementary fabric here, and it would give you a really elegant looking, um, 
pattern on your cathedral window. This was a little bit more springy and fun is what I was going for. So I put that extra piece in there. That's strictly a design element. Um, the other way is to leave this, you know, uh, like this. You're still going to see, you know, this sewn down as you look at it. And you're going to get that shape of the cathedral window and but you'll have the same fabric showing through that you have pulled back here and like I said with it with an you know a shot cotton or a linen or something like that and a pretty uh, piece in here would just be fabulous and if you made a pillow a uh, Dupiani silk I've made one with Dupiani silk in the past and that was quite pretty too so this is the traditional way that a cathedral window goes together let me make sure there's no other questions before I move to the next one um, my stiletto I got from um, a person who came to my retreat and made it for me. Do you backstitch when you start and finish sewing? Yes, I do. Mine has a, uh, the Bernina that I use has a lock stitch when I start and when I finish. So you didn't see me backstitch, but yes, normally I, that's basically um, backstitch. Um... All right. So that's the first one. And I don't see any other questions on that. If you think of something, um, check with me. The second one is um, very different from the first. But you're going to end up with patches that look like this. And I did, you know, strong, uh, you know, strong colors so that you could really see, and I'm using up some more of that background fabric. And this is a 3D uh, patch as is what I'm making here. And I'll show you how to do that. And then the sewing of those four together. My dimensions are these are the the background or this square piece is six and a half inch squares and the four squares that we're going to sew those together with are three and a half so six and a half three and a half we're going to take the six and a half inch square i am going to fold that in half i'm going to give it a good finger press all right, so I've, I've folded it that way. Now I'm gonna take two of my squares. I have four per block. And these are, again, three and a half. This is gonna go face up. Then I'm going to put this one on top of that one underneath. I have a quarter of an inch left here at the bottom. And then this one goes right side down, face down on top of those. So the pretty sides of the fabric all go together on that. So I'll take those to the machine. And I'm gonna sew down that right hand side quarter inch. thread out of the way and now I have um, a piece that uh, there we go a piece that I have sewn on the right side open those up pull them back and I have a piece uh, that looks like this and I I do like to at least finger press those um, for the next for the next part that we're going to be that we're going to be doing um, just to keep it out of my way so now we're going to do the same thing on the other side flip that over I want my square right side up this one has the right sides to the outside 
quarter inch at the bottom. I put this one on the top again and right side down, that would be helpful. And I'm gonna sew that just like I did before. And now I, I want to press these open and where the fold is it's bent over and it just makes it a little bit easier to fold if you just um, take your scissors in there and snip that don't snip into your seam line um, because that would kind of be a disaster it just makes it easier and I'm gonna press those open I think the hardest part about pressing open is to separate them. Um, all right, so now I have that open and you're gonna go, so now what? <laughs> And if you've never made a 3D flying geese or a 3D bow tie, um, this looks um, a little crazy. So now you have this little kind of a, a pocket in there. You're going to bring your seams from either side together. Get those lined up and pin that in place. Again, I, I press from right to left across the seam so that um, my needle can stay put. Then I, I stuck my finger in there, made sure that that was pulled out, that it was not going to be in the seam line, line it up, and I, well, that is not what you should do, is press that over there. Didn't even notice that. So let's pretend that we're starting all over again. And I, pre I put my needle in on the right side, go to the left side, and that way I can sew into the seam line without anything moving before I remove the pin. So I stuck my finger in, moved everything out of the way, lined this up, And now I'm going to put a pin there and do the exact same thing on the other side. Again, making sure that that's down, that I won't catch it as I sew and get this all together. Pin that on this side so it doesn't move on me. All right, so I've got this. It's a little, it feels a little bit awkward. I make sure that this is out of the way of my quarter inch seam line um, as I sew that across, straight across. All right, so let's go to the machine. Here you can see that I can go all the way up right into the seam. Now this is where you have to take a second and just make sure that this side now um, is all of that extra um, bulk is out of the way. And you're going to finish that off.
Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't move the, the camera. Then. I apologize. But basically, I sewed a seam straight across. All right. Making sure that this is out of the way. Now, when I open it up, I have my square on there. Um, and it's, it's open here. And I have that. So now I want to press this open. And I get started, and here is where that little piece, if you just snip that on either side, it just makes it a little bit easier for the ironing part. You don't have to do this. All right, so now I have these four squares. I want you to think about these four squares as you would, because when we do this, um, you need another square in here, all right? And so how do we get that square in here when we've done this. It doesn't kind of make sense until you think of these four squares like you did those four small blue squares. So we are going to sew using our, you know, fifth square. They will be right side out. And I'm going to do exactly um, the same thing that I did before. Um, I have my you know, square um, right side down. I'm going to line that up and then I'm putting my other square um, and it doesn't, you know, it really doesn't matter which way you go because um, all four of your corners are basically you just want these to all line up again. And you're going to do exactly the same thing that you did before. I want to make sure that my seam lines match up. And the reason that I'm being very careful with that, again, is because the... Um, your arches or you know what makes it look like a cathedral window will be a lot neater um, if you were to do that so let me go to the machine and again I'm going down the right side with the fold if you look um, the fold is down as it was with the first and I can get into that seam line before I remove my pin. All right. Then, so I have this now, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I have lining that up. Actually, let me go this way. Making sure my seams again line up where they're supposed to. Pinning from right to left. All right. Um, 
you know, I keep, I am pressing um, on my machine camera and uh, that's why it's not moving over. I, it's today I'm having to press a couple of times to get it to change. Apologize. Um, and I just saw that that's what was happening. So now I have that again and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I want to press these seams open um, class is taking a a little bit longer today and I apologize for that but I, I wanted to show you all three of these because they're they're very different and they go together a little bit quicker um, you get a completely different design element from each one of them and so now you're going to be doing the same thing again you have this one open in the center I want to line that up first with the the center seam keeping everything out of the way and my finger um, goes down I, I again lining up my seam lines this is this comes right up to the left side of that seam. I'm gonna I'm only gonna pin on that side so that it stays put. Then coming to this side, making sure that I have you know this one pressed open again aligned with the seam. And then I'm going to sew all the way across that seam. And I'll, there we go. And so now I have, you know, all those blocks um, together in there. And you, you kind of, uh, you know, make your next one and, and uh, you know, sew your uh, square into it and keep doing that. And so now when you press them back, your piece of fabric, and I think this one is just a little it's more of a rectangle but then you would put your pieces in there um, they would need to be smaller than this I, I would make them probably at, at three and a half uh, to go into the inside of that um, so that you have a you know a square that fits in there you you fold that back and sew it down just like we did before 
And again, you can, um, if you start up at the top, you can go this way, then you can go this way and this way so you can sew all the way down without starting and stopping or starting and stopping. So your fabric's um, about four inches um, in here would work perfectly for that and that's how that one gets done so that makes it real easy because those just spin those just turn right back make sure you give it a good press because you want those points to uh, you know come out right there so that's that method all right and then the very last one is I've done three sides of this. Basically, what you do is that you have three and a half inch squares, three and a half inch background squares that you fold um, in half to make a, a triangle. And you're gonna put those in your four corners. So that they you know, and then the other two would go on this side, so you would have a square. Um, you're going to lay your piece of fabric over the top of that square so you don't see those seam lines in there. Um, when those are all sewn together, then you simply, again, I glued that in, and this is probably the easiest one. Uh, but the one you need to really take the most care when you are sewing uh, these together at those points so that it doesn't overlap. You've got a good quarter inch seam line. I would actually take a, a ruler and, and you know measure and, and trim if I needed to because you want those points to come in um, really well there. And I sew it exactly the same way. I get my first stitch in then I pull everything back and I can sew it down and I have my cathedral window. Now, you have the same issue here as you do with the next one. So what simply what you do is that you would place your next three here and you would uh, before you sewed these together you would have you know your pieces here and you're going to sew your next four patch together put your next block in so these are you know those go into those corners and you keep sewing it that way and you have your cathedral window this is probably the, the quickest, the easiest, the least painful, and this can be done. Also, um, what makes this one even easier, I use three and a half because that's what I was already doing, but for a charm pack, these can be five inch squares. Um, your the, the white ones are, you know, five inch square or whatever color you're gonna choose to make them. And it's all done with charm packs, and then you can lay those, you know, charms, um, you know, fold and, uh, you know, your muslin, cut those to five inch squares. Uh, if you're going to use mu muslin for the background or whatever you choose to, to make there. So that's the three methods of the cathedral window. Let me go and check and make sure that I Yes, um, keeping the camera in shot. I, I don't know why. I think there was something here on my desk that was keeping, that was blocking my finger from getting it or something. So if white fabric is six and a half, what are the small squares? They're three and a half. Um, or if you use charm packs. Um, When you sew at home, do you watch TV or listen to music? No, I, I don't. Um, that distracts me and I don't sew as well. But I know lots and lots of people who do that and find that to be very effective for them. So I, I think it's just you and your personality. First type of block I ever saw. A friend's mom got me into quilting. 
Uh, Wonder Clips. Yeah, Wonder Clips could help, possibly. Why do you use enders but not leaders when sewing? I did have a leader on there. Uh, maybe you didn't, couldn't see it. Uh, but I leave, uh, I always put one in my machine. So I do use both um, leaders and, and enders. Do you use batting with those quilts since you have several layers of fabric? Um, you could, and some people will put um, batting under that piece of fabric that they put in the center to give it kind of a puffed up look. Um, this one, I would probably use some type of batting in it. The first one, the traditional one, probably not because there are three or four layers of fabric already there. Um, You know, um, Diana, if you're, you know, your mom um, had them and they're not quite even, just go back and even everything up to the nearest, you know, or the, the, the smallest squares that she has. And you should be just fine with that. Which one uses less fabric? Um, I think they're all fairly equal um probably the last one that i did would use a little bit less if you're using a charm pack and but you still have the yardage that you'll need for whatever you know what i used as my white fabric um to cut up the the others yes you would need backing the first one you you wouldn't necessarily need the backing if you hand stitched your pieces together but if you use your sewing machine to um, block those down let me go back to that one and show you what I mean let me drop the camera if you where you have to sew these down if you did it by machine that's going to show on the back you know a, a little zigzag so if you did that by machine you would see it on the back and then you you know uh, whether or not that matters to you. If you do it by hand like I did, then nothing shows on the back um, except, you know, the, the sewing that you did around your white strips. So that would be, you know, what you might want to think about um, for that. So I know, Lynn, it's amazing what people come up with. Would you put the backing on before you finish sewing the edges? Or how do you attach the backing to finish it? Um, basically, I attach, I would put the backing on just like I would any quilt, baste it, and then um, put a binding on it around it, uh, or uh, do the pillowcase, you know, tur the turning, whichever you want to do. So you would do it the same way. Um, the backing on and use the when you sew the curves as part of the quilting process then you know layer all three together before you even start that process with the backing um, it might get a little uh, bulky with that I don't know I've never done it that way uh, I've always you know I've done pillows and things like that I've never made a full quilt since I, I did it with my mother um, so that would be my suggestion with that if you have the space and or even a, you know a long arm or one of the the table ones then you can make that as part of the quilting process with the backing on it especially for that last one that I did uh, that would work really well for that. Um, how would the quilt be quilted? Uh, pretty much like um, you could put a design in the center square of each one. You could uh, echo, you know, the, the curve there. You know, I've seen it done mostly those two ways. 
uh, again, I would probably consult with, you know, whoever's going to quilt it for you or with, you know, as you look at it for yourself. The quilt show to enter the ruler. I can't get the submit to work. That's a John answer. Um, hopefully he'll he'll reply to that question um, here before we go off. If you turn it the pillow way, how do you secure the backing to the top? Basically what I do, let me uh, go down here. I would have a piece of fabric uh, if you put nine together, it makes 13 and a half. And then I, I simply put my backing on top of this face down. I sew and I leave an opening. I turn it and then just close it. So it's, I turn um, for the pillow. Because you have, you have a little bit of space at the points. For that, so I do a pillow turn uh, and close and cl put my, you know, um, pillow inside, you know, stuff it inside, and then I put them together and and either hand sew. Uh, I usually hand sew it because I it it looks a little bit better for me uh, if I don't do it. So that's how that's how I do it. Hopefully that answered your question. Um, are there written directions on the website? No, there are not. Because you can make these pretty much whatever size. Uh, the first version, the size was, remember I had 10 inch squares um, of your background. I had a nine inch template. Ironed those to the back side, glued the corners, and then I folded it in once to the center and then the second time. And that was the measurements for that. And then the uh, mini charms were what I used for the center parts of those that folded back. My design element that I put under it because I just wanted to add a little bit more color and a little bit more fun. Because these squares end up at four and a half, uh, I cut them at I think a four and a quarter so, or maybe even a little bit shyer than that, and, and glued those, you know, down um, underneath so that I would have that peeking through. But that's that was my design element. So hopefully that answered that question um, for you. So the sizes were, you know, um, 10 inch squares for the first one with nine inch uh, template, fold those back, and that was, and then the other two, I, I just kept it easy and I cut six and a half inch squares and three and a half. So, um, but the sizes are, are different depending upon the patterns and you could probably find patterns. I, in fact, I know you can, you can find patterns on the internet and basically this is just showing you the steps in the process and go ahead and follow the pattern for their cutting uh, because the, you know, the, the steps in the process would be the same. And the other two that I did, I, I did not look it up. Uh, because I knew how to do them. So I'm sure that you can find a tutorial maybe, or um, I think the very last one that I did, I've seen that one somewhere before, so I know it's on the internet, um, other than what I did today, you know, as far as measurements are concerned, but choose whatever measurements that you want to. And I, you know, one, one way to look at that would be to do the measurements like you would for a, a flying geese. So whatever you're cutting a flying geese to would certainly work for this, for the, the you know, the um, squares. Um, so if you, cause this the six and a half by three and a half would make a six inch finished square with, um, you know, if, if you were taking those types of measurements, so that hopefully that would be help helpful. All right. Great. Que they were great questions and thank you for sticking it out uh, a whole lot longer today so that I could show you all three because they're different and it depends on you and how you like to do it. And 
quite frankly, I like all three methods. They they all look good. The last one is a little bit larger uh, because I do use charm packs, five inch squares, and you know, so that's kind of fun. But uh, the first one is the more traditional one, and I, I really love doing that, and I don't think it's hard. Once you have it down, it's really not that intimidating. Uh, wonderful. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, the traditional method isn't as daunting. And so sometimes I think we scare ourselves out of doing stuff. If we had just try it, we'd find, um, what, am, what am I doing next week? I think... Uh, I'm going to be talking about, there's two new rulers that are pretty amazing that came out with Quilter Select, and I think I'm going to put something together to make using those, uh, a 60 degree and um, half square, quarter square, triangle ruler, and so I think that's what I'm doing next week. So you guys are all very welcome. You all have an absolutely wonderful week, and I will see you next Saturday. Thanks for being here.